And hello and welcome back. Uh, as you can see in the video, we'll be covering chapter 12. I'm skipping ahead here because the first project is the career research report, part of which is a resume. And I probably don't need to say this, but the, uh, as you probably know, uh, a resume is one of the most critical, uh, one of the most important documents you'll ever write. Uh, it's really sad when somebody's got all the right qualifications, all the right uh, experience, but they uh, the right attitude, but uh, just because they have some uh, errors or some problems with the resume, they will get passed over uh, for a job. And maybe I uh, can't even take that first step in that career that you've been working towards all this time. So it's a really, really important topic. Uh, I do want to have some fun with it, though. Uh, but in any case, we've got a lot to cover. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into Chapter 12. All right, so here's our learning objectives uh, for this lesson. Uh, we'll be talking about a uh, detailed timeline for your job search, uh, how to conduct an effective job search, and lots of uh, fun websites and tools you can use for that. Uh, preparing that resume that makes you look attractive to employers. Uh, we'll talk about the common difficulties uh, that are, arise during those job searches, uh, what to do about the online portion. You know, most, uh, uh, most jobs these days won't have you submit a paper copy of a resume. Instead, they'll use a, a website. And then we'll talk about honesty on a resume, always an important uh, topic. A lot of stories out there about people that get fired because they lied on their resume. All right, so let's start just by talking about what a resume is. And it's a pretty good definition here. A persuasive summary of qualifications for employment. Now, so the key words there, of course, persuasive. You're trying to persuade somebody that you're qualified to do the job. And also a summary. And so it's not going to be a comprehensive, super detailed uh, document. Uh, you're just basically hitting the highlights. Uh, you don't want to go uh, page after page after page uh, <laughs> with the resume. Uh, what you're trying to do is put yourself forward in the best possible light. And there's some uh, reasons to, uh, to take pains to do a good resume. Uh, they talk here about how it makes you look well organized and prepared, uh, as opposed, of course, to if you turn in one that looks sloppy and disorganized, do the opposite. Uh, highlighting your unique qualifications, this is the biggest one in my, uh, my opinion. If a really good resume will draw attention to the parts, uh, to the aspects of your education or experience that will uh, be the most relevant to that job and not, get, uh, not have it cluttered and uh, the good stuff get lost in the mix. Uh, helps you try for an even better job. Uh, so even if you have a job already, uh, it's a good idea to keep your uh, resume up to date. And especially if you have it posted on those uh, websites we'll talk about, uh, you might even uh, uh, get some offers that are better than what you have all, what you have at the moment. And then uh, as a student, you learn how to prepare for the job market. It's a good first step uh, when you're on the job hunt to put together your resume. Uh, See what you've got uh, already. Uh, see where you see the areas you need to work on, where your weaknesses are. Uh, so it's even a good educational step. All right, so let's talk about job hunting. And before we get started here on this slide, I wanted to take a minute to ask you uh, if you've had a job before, uh, how did you find it? Uh, if you've never worked before, maybe talk to your your folks or your friends and ask them how they found their job. Uh, did they use a website? Did they just know somebody? Uh, just take a minute to inquire and then come back. All right, so let's look at some, uh, some of what the book tells you. It's really good advice. Uh, one, checking the services of the Career Placement Office. And of course, we have one of these at St. Cloud State University, the Career Services uh, Department. Uh, I think it's a, is a department the right word? <laughs> anyway, uh, you can go to their office and get all kinds of information. And they're always hosting job fairs, uh, which we'll talk about. But there's really no excuse not to at least uh, have a, take, take the first few steps to get something lined up uh, for your gra after graduation to be able to walk into an entry level job. It's really nice and you don't have to do, go it alone. Uh, so make sure you take advantage of these uh, other career services on campus. And, and they can even look over your resume for you, do uh, mock interviews. I mean, it's just really wonderful. Uh, sometimes you'll, uh, you know, hear contradict contradictory things there, but that's fine. Uh, join extracurricular organizations. So you might have a, 
let's say you're a accounting major, there's a, there's accounting clubs on campus, student-run organizations, and they often have uh, ties to businesses and, and companies or uh, you know, agencies, uh, some way to help you get that job. Uh, so this is really important. Uh, finding jobs and internships that give you experience. Uh, most programs, including the English program, uh, really emphasizes internships. Uh, some of these are on campus. Uh, you might work, uh, I have a student right now working in the uh, visual studio or the visual lab, visualization lab in, on campus, uh, learning how to do software and uh, technical writing. Uh, so that's a good example, a good way to get experience. Uh, I think he's actually getting paid for that too, which is a, a nice bonus. But uh, just anything you can do, uh, if you, you know, think about the major, think about the career you you want. Maybe you can't get a job in that field right away, but maybe there's something sort of related to it that might help somehow distinguish you. And internships are really good. Uh, you know, you can get experience that way. Some of them are unpaid, but you're basically getting the uh, the, the experience there and the, and the learning hands-on uh, training is what you're getting as payment. Uh, note which courses you like. This, this is always a good sign. It's amazing how often I talk to people that took a little course that wasn't part of their major. Maybe they took something for fun. I was actually just talking to my brother last night, and he was saying that one of his favorite classes was something that had nothing to do with his major, which was accounting. Uh, but he made he took this class in photography, and he just really fell in love with the, uh, the subject matter. And he ended up getting a job as a video editor at a news station. So, so <laughs> you just never really know, uh, but it was his experience in that course uh, that helped him, I guess, gave him the confidence to apply for something that he didn't really feel like he was uh, well-trained or focused on at the time. But uh, nevertheless, if you really enjoy your courses, you'll probably like a job in that field. It's kind of common sense, but uh, you just never know. Uh, some other things you can do to prepare for your job hunt, conducting a self-assessment. And there's several ways you can do this. Uh, there's personality tests, aptitude tests, and I was going to stop here with this one and ask you another question. Have you taken one of these tests? Maybe in high school, I think they're pretty common. Uh, maybe you took one in college uh, where they, I think it's called the Myers-Briggs, <laughs> something like that test, and they try to show you like the type of job you'd be qualified to do. Uh, so have you ever taken one of those? And if, if so, do you agree with the results of it? You know, I have to say kind of for fun, a little fun tidbit. I remember taking mine back in high school, and one of the jobs that was recommended was mime. <laughs> yeah, I did not uh, take that one. Uh, in the aptitude tests, you can some, sometimes if you work for a temp agency, they'll give you one of those, and you can, and you know, they'll test things like your typing speed or uh, your knowledge of uh, uh, Microsoft Word or something like the Excel spreadsheets, and uh, that can be helpful. Now, you might not realize how skilled you are in some of these things. And then you can just ask yourself some questions. Uh, so what skills and strengths do I have? You know, just thinking about myself, I'd probably say I have pretty strong computer skills, uh, writing skills, uh, <laughs> teaching skills, I would I'd like to think, uh, communication skills. Uh, so what about you? Think about what you have. Uh, what achievements have given satisfaction? Uh, so have you received a reward of some sort of distinction, held an office in a student uh, organization, anything like that, maybe published something? Uh, what work conditions do I like? Uh, this is a big one. You know, do you want a job where you're sitting in an office all day behind a desk? Uh, would you rather be outdoors? Uh, do you like a regular schedule? Do you want to be able to come in uh, as you please? Uh, do I prefer firm deadlines or flexibility? So I tend to work better, I think, when I do have those uh, deadlines. <laughs> I usually blow my deadlines, but <laughs> nevertheless, there's some kind of pressure to get off your butt and uh, do something. Uh, what kind of work-life balance do I want? And so another big one. Uh, I know a lot of people will they'll, they'll choose a career. Let me put it this way. You know, some careers take up so much of your time that you don't have a lot of time left over uh, for family life. You know, unfortunately, some of the professor jobs can be like that. Uh, there are places called Research One Universities, which is where they have the PhD, big PhD programs. And a lot of people want to shoot for that. 
Uh, but I don't like that. I never would want to be at one of those universities because it does just dominate all of your time, and you basically have no life outside of uh, of that, uh, you know, out of that job. And I don't like that. I want to have this as time with my family, uh, so that wouldn't work out for me. And plus, I don't want to just be thinking about work all the time. Uh, so that's just me, though. You might be different. You might like that. Uh, get really into your career, not even um, maybe that's more important to you than uh, the family stuff, family and friends. Uh, where do I want to live? <laughs> uh, this is another big one. You know, a lot of people ask me, uh, Matt, how, do, how could you be? Uh, you grew up in the South. You grew up in Louisiana. You grew up in Florida. Uh, well, you went to school in Florida. Uh, how'd you end up in Minnesota? You know, it's really cold up there. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> and of course it is. Um, but, you know, you, you have to grow up and go where the jobs are. It's it's good I had a wife that was willing to travel with me or, or to move uh, up here with me. I don't know if she <laughs> necessarily likes the, the climate. Uh, but I'll tell you this, too, that really you could live anywhere and you could get obsessed about the weather or the climate or, or something like that. But really what makes the difference is the people that you work with. You know, do you have good neighbors? Uh, do you have good friends at your job? And if if you do, then you probably won't matter so much. Uh, where it is you can make friends pretty much anywhere and it's 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 nice to have that flexibility i know some people uh they're they're kind of stuck they can't move away from minnesota or even move out of their town to get a job and if that's you that's going to really restrict your options uh, so i try to r recommend if, it, if at all possible keep an open mind uh, just know you might have to move pretty far away to a place you never would have expected to find yourself sometimes uh, to land that good job uh, but you know if you have really strong preferences uh, that might be something to think about now you know that might actually determine what you want to major in and uh, the type of career that you want it might be based around uh, living in your town what's available in your town uh, that might be you know that'd be a very different um, self-assessment or job hunt strategy than somebody willing like me that was willing to move anywhere okay so I'll stop again uh, I want you to answer some of these questions. You don't necessarily have to answer all of these, uh, but I at least like to know about your uh, what the skills and strengths are uh, that you feel that you have. And then uh, if you want to answer some of these other questions, uh, I'd like to read those too. Now we're talking about the personal branding, uh, which yeah, basically just means marketing yourself. So you could almost imagine yourself as a product on a shelf. <laughs> You go to buy a, uh, a tube of toothpaste, and it seems like there's about 500 different options there. And so all those different brands are trying to stand out. Uh, they're trying to appeal to different sorts of people uh, with different uh, motivations, I guess, or different uh, uh, things, criteria <laughs> that they're looking for in terms of a toothpaste. And so you can think about yourself that way, too. Like, what makes you stand out? What makes you uh, unique? And what makes you different than every all those other uh, people applying for that job and there's a couple of tools that they recommend here to get started on this uh, branding um, one is LinkedIn and you, you may or may not have heard of this software before it's a website or think about I usually think about it like the professional version of Facebook so it's a really good social networking tool but it's 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 oriented um, it's oriented on jobs I so you upload basically a resume to this and uh, you can use this to find jobs. You can also use this to connect to other people that are already doing that job, which I strongly, strongly recommend that you do. If you want to be a computer engineer, let's say, you should be on LinkedIn trying to connect to some other computer engineers because they're going to be invaluable, not just as a reference, but to give you information about the classes you should be taking and where the job opportunities might be. Uh, but really, though, at this point, it could be helpful just to look at those profiles. You know, so find some computer engineers or some nurses or whatever it is, look at their LinkedIn pages, and that'll start giving you some ideas about uh, ways you might uh, develop your own brand. A personal web page, another good option. Lots of uh, ways to do that. Uh, blogs, you know, like they say, if you don't know what a blog is, it's kind of like a, it used to be sort of... Uh, kind of a little online diary or journal of your goings-on, but really they could be just any 
uh, any little reflections or articles about things. Uh, I see people use blogs sometimes as a kind of a part of a portfolio, uh, you know, to, to show your expertise in a subject matter. You can sort of track news and then write little posts about whatever's going on. Uh, so again, with the computer engineering, a, a computer engineer student might think, well, I'll start, I'll start up a little blog on WordPress or something, and every time I hear some news about a new development in uh, a programming language or a useful app or something, I'll write a little blog post on it. And that's something you can mention in your resume and on your uh, cover letter. And if the employer takes a look at it, they might be really impressed with your communication. And then, of course, the good old Facebook. You know, I know people are <laughs> abandoning that platform, seems like, these days. But, you know, it's there's so many people on it. You could certainly find professionals uh, on there, comp hook up with companies, start tracking uh, their development. Same thing with Twitter. You know, if you can find the, the company's uh, Twitter page and keep abreast of uh, what's going on there, uh, it's really nice. When you, we'll talk about that later when you go into the job interview. If you can talk about some recent things that have happened there at the company, they'll be really impressed with your research instead of just uh, you know, going in there and not knowing anything about that company. Uh, professional forums is another one. <clears throat> uh, just about any job, uh, you know, rhetoric. I'm a rhetoric professor, so there's a lot of uh, professional forums out there. There's one, uh, the Writing Program Administrators uh, Forum is one. And it probably wouldn't be interesting to the average person, but it's a great way to, to keep in touch and to meet other professionals, be able to start building up that uh, collegial network. And then a cover letter, you know, we'll talk more about that next time, but this is basically a, a nice letter that introduces yourself and puts your, uh, emphasizes your accomplishments, talks about what makes you uh, uniquely qualified for the job. Now, so these are just a few of the tools uh, that you can use to start working on that personal branding. Now, there are some concerns or some cautions about social networking. Uh, one is to uh, remove any unprofessional material. Now, I'm going to say some of this stuff kind of sounds like a, a little bit of a, a little bit over my, what's the word I'm looking for? A little curmud curmudgeonly, <laughs> curmudgeon? <laughs> uh, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, I don't think employers expect you to be this. You know, I guess it depends on the job and the employer, obviously. But, you know, I can't believe that all employers would just not even consider somebody just because they had some funny uh, funny memes on their Facebook page or had some uh, pictures of themselves at a party. Uh, you know, so I wouldn't get too, uh, you know, too obsessed about this. Uh, but certainly if you got something that's, <laughs> you know, if you got a picture of yourself smoking pot or something, uh, you might want to reconsider that uh, or uh, you know anything uh yeah this is what i was thinking of this would probably be more of a concern you know so if it's just some photos of you goofing around uh, who cares uh this is probably a bigger concern uh, if you've got rants or negative comments about the current or past employers and teachers I'll always tell students you know do not be complaining uh, about your other teachers, your other professors in front of another professor. Because whenever I hear students doing that, I'm thinking to myself, I'm sure they're saying that same negative crap about me in that person's class. And it just doesn't make the person look good. Now, same thing with the uh, students that complain about other students. You know, it's just, it's not a very good habit to get into. It's, it's, you can really slip into this habit of being negative about people. And, and especially when that person is not around, it's just not a good uh, way to live your life. <laughs> Basically, as I just say, stay positive. Uh, don't be uh, complaining about people because, for one, it might get back to them. Uh, but for two, it just doesn't make you look good. Oh, yeah, this is another big one. Uh, the political or social rants. Uh, you hear about this all the time, right? There'll be, a, you know, there's been a spate recently of comedians and people on uh, celebrities, but it could be anybody. Uh you know, you're chosen for this honor. Maybe you get the job offer, you're all excited, but then uh, somebody finds this old, you know, years back. Uh, maybe, maybe something you posted on Twitter 20 years ago. I don't know, has Twitter been around that long? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, but maybe they could find that and say, look, you know, even though this was a long time ago, it's still, we still don't, we still won't hire you because we just, it makes you look too bad. Uh, so you might want to go through there and remove all that stuff, uh, especially in today's climate. 
with all this, it's, it's almost, I've never seen it like this where there's so much uh, division, uh, you know, about what political party you are. Uh, so if you're Republican and that's clear on your social networks or, or Democrat, uh, then that might be, a, a, that might have a big impact, right? They might say, well, we don't want to hire this person. Uh, they're too political. Uh, they're going to show up here and start trouble. <laughs> I going to hate them. You know, it seems like a crummy reason not to hire somebody, but uh, there you go. Uh, remove any personal information that might embarrass you. And that ought to go without saying. Uh, one of the things I do mention in the book I think is important is that it might not be something you posted. It might be friends coming in and posting things on your site. Uh, so if you have that friend that likes to post uh, the obscene material or just uh, questionable memes or something, you might want to remove that person or, or make it so that they can't, you know, make your Facebook page so that just not anybody can come there and post stuff on it. Uh, you can change that in the settings. And then after the job hunt, you know, you can always uh, undo that. But I think it's probably a good idea just not to, <laughs> not to post it. Yeah, there we go. Remove inappropriate material posted by friends, families, and relatives. Um, yeah, so I have some relatives that will do this every now and then. Fortunate, I'm, I'm glad they don't actually post it on my Facebook page, but they'll send messages and things. I'm always thinking to myself, I'm glad that that's not on my front page <laughs> for all my colleagues to see that. I'd, I'd have to remove it. And sometimes people see it before you can even get there to remove it. So it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and set that. Uh, set your pages where only you can post there or you have to give people permission to post there. It's probably a better idea. Uh, what's this one? Check blog for writing aptitude. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you uh, do post a blog, obviously you'd want to have that um, uh, well edited, grammatically correct, no, sp no spelling errors. I mean, if it's a horribly written blog, it's not going to make you look very good. It's just going to do the opposite. And so this slide is about how the employers actually use the resumes. And of course, the obvious one is that they uh, they look at your resume and decide whether they should bring you in for the interview or call you or <laughs> do a Skype interview with you. You know, they probably have more applicants than they have time uh, to interview every single one of them. And so they just want to figure out you know, narrow it down, figure out who would be the best people uh, to interview. Uh, they can also use these to scan or to skim to see if you have the qualifi uh, qualifications they're looking for uh, to assess what they assume is your best work. Uh, so again, this is why they, they hammer so much on the having these proofread, well edited. You know, if you've got all kinds of errors on your resume and in your cover letter, now they're going to think, well, this is the best work this person can do, so it's not going to get any better than this. It's probably not the right, <laughs> not the right tone you want to set <laughs> uh, to prepare for the job interviews. Now, so you might be really nervous as, uh, you know, nervous as the person that's going to be interviewed, right? But it, might, it could be that the employer is a little nervous too. I mean, they uh, they're meeting somebody new as well. They don't want to look bad, uh, so they could look over your resume to come up with ideas for questions and topics. Um, so it's, it's good to have uh, some little hooks in there for them uh, so they can talk about it with you. Now that's why sometimes uh, the resumes will even have a section on there for hobbies. You know, if you're really, really into something, uh, snowmobiling or ice fishing or whatever it is, uh, some people like to mention those things just so they'll have a, uh, the, you know, the job interview can have a little bit of a lighthearted element to it. <laughs> uh, plus with that, it's good, too, if you're moving into a spot where, well, like if you were moving from Florida to Minnesota, uh, if you can show some interest in some winter sports, uh, they might think you're a better fit uh, than if all your hobbies are, you know, uh, surfing. So to get final approval for selected applicants. Uh, so this is another stage, depending on how big this company is, uh, it might not be just one person doing all this, right? Uh, there might be a committee and they... Uh, or the human resources person might need to get some approval from the department uh, where the person might be working, right? So they might uh, narrow these down and go to the engineers and say, is, uh, does this person look qualified? Can we, <laughs> can you approve these? <laughs> or go up uh, the chain of command to uh, some higher, uh, higher official to get the approval. Uh, so these are all uh, good uses for resumes. You, you probably thought about the first one, but maybe some of these other ones are new to you. 
All right, so the classic question, how long should that resume be? And man, I have heard all sorts of advice, uh, contradictory advice on this. Uh, this one is what I usually hear, that it should fill at least one page. Uh, it looks really bad if you've only got a couple of, you know, about a half a page, or I've even seen some students turn in like a quarter page resume. It just makes you look like you haven't done anything, you're not taking it seriously, you don't really want the job. Uh, so you need to have at least one page. Uh, they do say that the average resume these days is two pages, and they got some, some studies to back this up, some data. Uh, so that seems, uh, you know, I guess that's about right. They say that you, you don't want a second page if there's only going to be a few lines on it. Uh, it needs to go down. I think they said something like 10 or 11 lines. You know, I'm kind of hesitant to go with this, even though they say that the uh, longer resumes tend to get better results. It's just <laughs> part of me just still thinks, uh, especially with an entry-level person, uh, the one page is probably better, uh, simply because uh, uh, the more stuff you put on a resume, uh, the more cluttered it gets, the more uh, you'll be diluting it. And if you've got two or three really stellar uh, things on there, some really great qualifications, some great achievements. Uh, if you have a bunch of other information on it, it might get lost. They might not see it. Uh, so I would just offer you that caution. Uh, I definitely wouldn't try to just pad it out uh, and be wordy just to get to those two pages. Uh, if you've got enough really good information uh, to put on that second page, fine. But again, keep in mind, sometimes uh, less is more with this stuff. Yeah, put the most important information on the first page. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want your you don't want to hide your achievements uh, somewhere on page two in the, in the midst of a big clutter. Uh, at least ten lines on page two include the name and the page. So just for our purposes, I think you're, you'd probably be better off just doing the the one page uh, for our project. Uh, if later on, if you have a big bigger career and you're going for a higher level job, you might go to two pages. Now, what about emphasis? What do you want to emphasize on the resume? And this is one, this first point here, I think, is absolutely critical. So whatever you can do to remember, memorize this. So you want to emphasize your achievements. You know, what have you done? Not just what you had to do or just the duties, uh, what was expected of you. Uh, what have you done to go above and beyond that? And there's lots of different ways, uh, lots of different kinds of achievements. Um, yeah, some of them will be more relevant for the positions than others. Uh, so maybe if you're going for that computer engineering uh, job, for example, if you uh, if you held an office, if you won a prize, uh, if you um, you know went to an event, uh, contest, <laughs> just anything, uh, or maybe you did a really uh, successful project. Uh, anything like that will be in a, will come across as an achievement instead of just something that you were obligated to do. Uh, yeah, shows superiority uh, to other applicants. And they even mentioned things like a GPA. So GPAs are kind of, I almost want, I almost want to say meaningless these days because it's just about everybody <laughs> has like the 4.0 and the summa cum laude and, and all that uh, stuff. But... Uh, nevertheless, uh, if you don't put it on there, it might, 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 they might think you don't have it and uh, you, you did poor grades. <laughs> we'll probably talk more about that uh, later. Uh, yeah, recent achievements. So yeah, if you uh, maybe you won a, a contest back in high school, uh, but that was many years ago. It's probably not as impressive now as it was uh, back then. So you probably want to update that, maybe take some of the earlier ones off uh, so you can focus on more recent achievements. Now, to emphasize information on a resume, obviously putting it at the very top or the bottom will get more attention than somewhere in the middle. Uh, setting it off with white space, another uh, good tactic. And I know I, I don't know if I said this already, but this is why you should avoid those those templates that come with all the uh, word processors because they tend to do a crummy job and they'll just have text all over the place, and you won't have any. Uh, way to emphasize things. It just kind of all runs together and all these little sections. It's kind of crappy. You know, that's why I always just say keep it simple. You know, you don't want a real cluttered, uh, it's okay to have some blank space, you know, the white space around things because that'll draw the eye towards those uh, achievements better uh, than this 
you know, big mess where you don't even know what, you know, what, what should I even look at first? There's so much stuff going on, I'm, you know, kind of lost. <laughs> uh, given in a vertical and or bulleted list, so that's, you know what those are. It's basically what this uh, slide is here. Included in an informative heading, uh, so you don't want to get, again, carried away with, you know, 17 sections <laughs> on the resume. Uh, but certainly if you had in a heading like, uh, volunteer organizations or volunteer work uh, that kind of would emphasize that you'd see well there's a heading there kind of draws your eye to it. and I'm moving on to details and this is uh, uh, this first one here I know I keep saying this critical everything's critical uh, this one really is it's critical give evidence to support your claims uh, there's nothing worse I think than just somebody's resume and they've just they put a bunch of junk on there like oh i'm a good people person i'm great at making decisions i'm an excellent communicator uh, so they're making all these claims but they're providing zero evidence to support any of it you know anybody I, anybody could say uh, oh yes i'm a great leader or oh yes i'm i'm really proficient in c plus plus well am i supposed to just take your word for that you know, do, do you have any evidence for that? <laughs> As I always tell students, uh, you know, don't even put a, don't even bother putting something down uh, if you don't have any evidence uh, to support it. And I don't know if they're going to mention this here, uh, but some of the evidence might be, you know, again, if you've won an award, if you did a project, uh, did you put like the C++, did you write a program with C++? <laughs> Does the program actually work? Uh, you know, anything of that sort, if I say I'm a great communicator, uh, maybe I uh, can show that by, uh, maybe there's some satisfaction surveys if I worked in customer service, uh, or maybe I published a book or a newsletter. Uh, just any kind of evidence uh, is good. Um, convince the reader, that, that ties into this. Uh, separate you from the other applicants. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> based on what I've seen, Almost all these other applicants will be doing that. They'll just be saying, oh, I'm a great communicator, and they won't provide any evidence for that. Uh, so if you can provide some solid evidence, you know, maybe that's maybe the, even uh, being on this team, uh, uh, whether that could be a university team or um, intramural sports, uh, just being uh, even involved in something like that might be support uh, that you're a good team player, let's say. Say, I'm, great, I'm a great team player, I'm great at collaboration. Uh, well, what's my evidence? Well, I've, you know, I'm on all these intramural teams. I've, I've played soccer every, every uh, week. <laughs> you know, probably not the strongest possible evidence, but it's something, right? Uh, numbers and descriptions, you know, these are always good. You know, I raised, since I took over this job and uh, I was the president of this club on campus and through my leadership, we got the membership up by 25%. You know, we had a 50 extra, 50 more members uh, during my uh, uh, presidency than there was before. You know, something like that. Just some numbers there, always uh, uh, fairly convincing. Uh, yeah, and descriptions like, what did you do? Can you go into a little bit more detail about that? And that will show. Uh, you know, again, coming back to this, like the C++, I mean, I get students all the time. I just cannot seem to break them into the habit. Uh, they want to put this list of just a whole bunch of programs uh, on their resume somewhere. See, uh, let's say Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, PowerPoint, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever software they've been using, but they don't actually describe how they've used that software. And so to me, it's a lot more convincing if you would, instead of just putting C++, if you put, uh, you know, use C++ or programmed a uh, aggregation program <laughs> with C++. At least that gives me some uh, description of uh, how you know that or how you're proficient. Now, omit details that add no value. Uh, so this is, again, just the idea of padding it out to try to keep. This is why I think that the second page is probably not a good idea uh, because you probably don't have enough really useful information to go to that second page so you just be putting in some fluff you know going on for four sentences about that dishwashing job uh, when really you, you didn't even need to <laughs> everybody knows what a dishwasher does uh, you don't need to go on for six lines about it 
Uh, so that's another thing, another reason I would just keep it short or keep it uh, to one page. Uh, the writing styles be concise, uh, brief, but complete. That sounds like pretty good advice. Of course, it could be hard for you sometimes to know, like, well, what is, am I too brief? Am I not, am I going on for too long? Sometimes it can be hard just as a writer uh, to uh, figure that out on your own. So that's a good reason to have a friend look at it, um, parents, a fan, you know, who <laughs> maybe somebody that does the job, <laughs> and they, they'll probably be a better judge uh, than you are and tell you, well, you'd be a little too wordy, or this part's vague. Uh, use phr phrases and sentence fragments. So you don't want to have to keep saying, I blah, blah, blah. I wash dishes. Uh, you don't need to say that. You can just put um, <laughs> wash dishes. Not to say I washed dishes. Uh, never use I, use me or my if you must. That's what that ties into what I just said. You don't want full sentences on this resume. Uh, action verbs, the nouns. Uh, so there's a list, a couple of lists of these in the book, but you know, compiled, uh, constructed. You know, those are action verbs. If you say um, uh, the construction. Now that would be a noun, right? So think about construct versus construction. Uh, list items in parallel form. Uh, so we'll, if you look in the examples in the book, they'll usually put these uh, semicolons in between these. So they, you know, if you had that restaurant job, uh, you, you know, you think about the different tasks you did at the job. Uh, maybe wash dishes is part of it, but maybe also bus tables. Uh, maybe sometimes you uh, <laughs> mopped the floor, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Uh, the, the key is you don't want to say, I mopped the floor, semicolon, dishes were washed, semicolon. You see what I'm doing? They're not sticking to that, not keeping these elements in the same uh, format. Uh, so these should all be in a parallel form and they should be the same, you know, verb, object, verb, object over and over again. Uh, the keywords. Now this is, uh, again, one of these things you could find endless websites and articles and, and blogs about. Uh, you know, if you got to put these magical keywords on your resume, and if you just put these magic words there, then you'll get the job. I mean, it's kind of BS. Uh, but nevertheless, maybe there's something to it. You know, if they're using LinkedIn and maybe they're typing in uh, communication skills or something like this or or uh, uh, agile agile program agile uh, whatever that jazz is <laughs> maybe they're typing that in uh, to try to narrow down the pool uh, so it could be useful um, but on the other hand I the thing I would worry about is uh, maybe the somebody else might not know what that is and if you just got the keyword there uh, that might not really be helpful. Sometimes I think it might be better, again, to describe it in more detail. Like, what is this? Uh, what is Agile? So you may include uh, software programs, uh, job titles, types of degrees. Yeah, so somewhere in your, when you're talking about your education or your achievements or your uh, job descriptions, if you can sort of slip in there uh, the, the software that you used, like my brother, the video editor, uh, let's see, what does he use? Um, trying to think of the name of that software, he, Avid. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so when he's writing his job description, he'd probably want to put uh, something in there about how he uh, edited uh, newsreels with uh, Avid. Uh, job titles, you know, what are the actual titles of the jobs that you've had? Uh, the different types of degrees out there, you know, is it a master's, bachelor's? Uh, do you have uh, badges now or certificates? Uh, job specific skills, buzzwords, jargon. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Because uh, you don't know if the person reading the resume will know all the jargon. You know, sometimes this is a human resources person that doesn't know anything about that actual job. I guess it'd be okay to put it, just make sure you uh, explain what it is. Uh, professional organizations. Now, there's a bunch of these, just depends on uh, whatever organization, whatever uh, career field it is, they'll have these organizations uh, that go along with it. Uh, like for me, there's um, uh, 
uh, NCTE, the National Council of Teachers of English. Uh, so be, I could mention on there somewhere, I've been a member of NC, NCTE for however many years. You know, if that's a big deal for these, uh, these folks, uh, that might help me uh, get that job. Now, honor societies, so you know there's a bunch of those. Oh, <laughs> not much point of being in one if you're not even going to mention it, right? So uh, feel free. Uh, personality traits. You know, I'm not quite sure what they're getting at here. Uh, again, uh, I guess if you're, if you're, if you, some of these jobs uh, they don't ask for a resume. It's just all uh, you just, they just direct you to a website and you're filling in a form. And I guess they might ask you to identify some personality traits, uh, so you could think about this. But I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant on this one because it sounds a little bit like that the sort of fluffy ones. Uh, where people just go in and put, oh yeah, I'm a people person. I'm very, I'm a, I'm a go getter. <laughs> I got great initiative. Oh, you know, look at me. Woo, look at me go. Uh, just doesn't do a lot for me. You know, just somebody going through resumes. If I see, oh, you say that you're a go getter. Um, I'm always thinking, well, show me that. Don't just tell me that. Uh, you can tell me that all day. It's not convincing. All right, the layout and design of the resume. This is what people get tend to get obsessive about and when really it's probably not that big of a deal uh, I, again I just think that keep it simple keep it clean keep it elegant uh, you're good to go uh, don't get crazy uh, with all these different uh, fonts and spacing I, I think experiment with them yeah sure uh, but the end result should be something that's very readable very neat uh, don't get carried away with this overwrought uh, design uh, yeah, letterhead's good. So you probably don't have letterhead yet. Um, you might have some made. It's probably overkill, really. Uh, you can even generate letterhead with the computer. Uh, but if you're going to be sending out a whole bunch of these or you have a company, you know, it's great to have letterhead. So you not to keep putting uh, uh, the address information there. If you don't know what letterhead is, it's just a kind of paper that already has your has like your name up here, your company name, and then the, your phone number, address, that sort of thing. It's considered, it's considered um, official documents when you write it on letterhead. Uh, use the headings uh, for reading ease. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I think everybody knows to do this, right? But you know, obviously, you'd want to have a section there like education, um, and job experience, that sort of thing. You don't want everything just all smooshed together. Uh, avoid those templates. Yes, definitely avoid the templates. So Microsoft Word, if it sees you're trying to write a resume, it might even spring up and say, hey, I see you're writing a resume. Uh, let me give you one of these crappy templates where it's all jammed up and, you know, it doesn't, most of the stuff doesn't even apply to you. Uh, so, yeah, just, you know, could avoid those. Uh, again, you don't need a complicated mess. I just don't go there. I just keep it simple, a few headings. Uh, you don't need a bunch of fancy uh uh, layout, margin, and all this jazz. Just keep it simple, keep it clean. Uh, you're good to go. Let's see. Work with fonts, bullets, and spacing uh, to highlight information. Yeah, this is a pretty good point. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, you know, people overdo it, right? Uh, I see sometimes, uh, like with the bullets, and they'll have, a, you know, 50, 30 bullets. Everything's bulleted. Uh, it's stupid. Um, it's like highlighting every page, every word on a page. Uh, it actually doesn't work. You know, <laughs> uh, if you highlight one thing, uh, that'll draw your attention to that one thing. If you, if you highlight the whole thing, uh, you might as well not even have highlighted anything. You know, if that makes any any sense, what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> so yeah, if you have something that's really important, you really want it to stand out. You know, you could make that a little bigger. Uh, you can make sure that's it's sort of by itself and there's a lot of uh, white space around it. Um, you could bullet, make a bullet for it, you know, put that for that item. Uh, that would make it stand out. Uh, but again, if you do it too often, if you do it more than just a few times, it's going to uh, just make it look messy. Yeah, here we go. I should have I should have expanded <laughs> this down. Yeah, no more than three font. My God. Now, I would say no more than one font. Uh, use color sparingly <laughs> or not at all uh use at least a 10 point type well that's yeah come on 
I guess uh, some people might get into the, oh, I got to fit it on one page, so let me bump this part down to seven points. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, use uh, white space to group the items. Yeah, that's a good, a good tip. Uh, select good quality eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So you can actually buy, uh, I think they still sell this, the resume paper. Probably get that from Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> uh, if you want to have a nice uh, thick piece of paper. It's considered, uh, you probably don't want to turn it in on just a regular old sheet. Now let's see, uh, chronological resume. So this is what I want you to write. Uh, it's a chronological essay, just means time-based. Uh, so you're starting, you'll start each section with the most recent items and then go down uh, back in time as you go along. It's basically reverse uh, chronological order. And I, I want you to write this kind. Don't do the other ones we'll talk about, the skills resume or the functional resume. Uh, do the chronological one. Uh, so yeah, summarizes what you did in the timeline. Uh, starts with the most recent events. Uh, you should always start your resume uh, for me anyway, with your education, you know, after the contact information, of course, but you know, where'd you go to school and what kind of degree do you have? Uh, I think that should be at the top, you know, the most recent one, most recent degree. And I want you to, uh, for this project, to assume you already have the degree or you can skip it forward in time. So if you know you're going to graduate in, uh, you know, two or three years from now or next year or whenever it is, go ahead and just put that year there and just kind of, uh, you know, go with that sort of, it's almost like a way to plan uh, for your job hunt. Um, so that's fine. So just remember, don't start with a bunch of uh, skills or jobs uh, that really, uh, I really think that looks bad. Uh, I'd always tell students that if you don't think that your college degree uh, is the most important thing on your resume, uh, then you should drop out immediately. You're wasting your money, you're wasting your time in college. You know, if that job you had is really trumps all of your uh, college, uh, your college degree, then why are you even in college, right? That doesn't make sense. I'm not trying to be <laughs> mean there. It's just illogical. Uh, so start with your education, your degrees, and then you can talk about your uh, job experience. And yeah, don't forget the dates. You know, people usually want to see where it was and when you got this. You know, especially with a college degree, you know, if you have a computer, some kind of computer degree from the 80s, you know, a lot of that information might even be obsolete by now, right? It'd be more impressive in that case to have a more recent degree. Let's see what else they're going to tell us here. Uh, when to use, <laughs> when to use a chronological resume. If you are in Dr. Burton's class, you definitely should use one. Yeah, your education and experience are closely related for the job uh, which you're applying. So this might change. Obviously, if you're looking at this a decade from now or however long this is up and you've been out of college for a long time, uh, things might change. Uh, but for our purposes, again, the education should trump everything else. Yeah, so you have impressive job titles, offices, or honors. Let's see, the, the functional resume or the skills resume. Uh, so again, this would be something you would write if you've been out of college for a long time or maybe you don't have a college degree, right? A lot of people, uh, you know, they, they get great jobs. They don't have college degrees. It's not uh, essential in every case. Uh, so it wouldn't make, you wouldn't want to emphasize that though. Like, oh, look at me. I didn't go to college. You, you probably don't want to emphasize that point. And not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with that, but just probably not what you want to emphasize. And so use this, uh, uh, the skills resume, though, to emphasize basically the, the jobs you've had and the, and the, the task you performed, and the, the work you've done on those jobs. You know, it makes basically common sense that you would use a skills resume in those, um, in those circumstances. It de-emphasizes job titles, uh, employment history, and dates. Uh, so there's all kinds of problems people can get, can get into. Uh, you know, maybe you've left the field for many years and you were trying to get back to it and you got this big gap in your employment history. Um, or maybe you, you did go to college, but it was long ago and kind of like that case with the computer degree, you know, it's like 1984 uh, computer degree. Uh, you might be worried. You maybe don't want to emphasize that too much because they might think it's obsolete information. And so in those kind of cases, it might make sense to uh, do this kind of resume, emphasize the skills instead of the uh, the dates and the uh, education. Uh, when to use your education experience, not usual 
route to the job uh, you're changing your field you want to show broad experience from uh, paid jobs volunteer work extracurricular activities and college courses all right but anyway i'll mention that but just please remember to do the chronological one uh, for this class let's see resume resume information what is essential well believe it or not uh, some people forget to put their name and contact info uh, pretty crazy you know, you could have a great resume, but if you don't have your, your phone number on there, they can't contact you, so you don't get the job. <laughs> now, I will say this. I always get asked, you know, for, for my class, I don't need to know your actual phone number, your actual uh, address. Uh, you can just make up something, put any town, USA. Uh, that's fine. I just want to make sure you haven't forgotten that section. Uh, so if you want to make up an address or just put uh, 555 for your number, that's i'm not gonna call you <laughs> that's fine that's fine i don't need to have your actual contact info uh, but do remember though if this is for real and you are submitting the resume just make sure you change that back uh, to whatever the actual info is uh, education section you know obviously critical um uh, the experience another section you know you wouldn't ever want to have a resume where you didn't have one of these sections i just just be, that would just be crazy no uh, omit unfavorable information i think the book actually had a slightly different uh take on that there's a little sidebar uh that said that sometimes employers were employers will check your uh, uh, social security and find out you know if you're if you haven't mentioned a job uh, so if you got fired uh, from a job and you try to not you don't mention that uh, maybe they could figure that out and might make for a <laughs> pretty awkward interview <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I guess as much as possible, you certainly don't want to emphasize stuff that makes you look bad. Let's see, if you have, if you have over seven items, use the subheading. Uh, so what are we looking at there? We have a, uh, a sample resume. Good. All right, so what are some optional sections? So we said that the contact info, uh, the education, and the experience, you have to have those. But is there maybe there's some other sections you maybe you might want to consider maybe not essential and let's say they put a couple here uh, career objectives so this is one everybody seems to get obsessive about uh, the perfect career objective statement or the uh, there's different names for this uh, again I don't think it's really all that critical I usually just say don't even bother with this um, because I want you to have or just in, in general, I want you to have a targeted, uh, you know, place that you're applying to. And I don't think it's a good idea just to send out resumes willy nilly and, uh, you know, just anywhere uh, without a good sense of what, what it is you're applying to or for. You know, I, I just don't think that's all that smart of an idea. And sometimes if you're too uh, specific with your career objective, uh, you might they might actually pass you over think well this person wouldn't be interested in this job because they specifically say their career objective is to do this uh, instead so it might actually limit limit you in some ways uh, but you know if you feel really strongly about it <laughs> you can certainly put it on there uh, i'm not going to uh, to penalize you now this one i really do not like to see and yes i know the, uh, that maybe some people look for it they think it's critical but the summary of qualifications. Uh, my my beef with this is the resume itself is a summary of your qualifications. So if you if you need a summary of a summary, it just strikes me as you, you're too wordy. You're too you've been disorganized. It's cluttered. You got junk on there. Uh, I shouldn't need a summary of it. Uh, so you just go in and make it more concise. Take out the uh, the fluff. <laughs> you shouldn't need this. <laughs> and so I don't. I really do not like to see that. Um, honors and awards uh, it'd be kind of weird to put that section if you didn't have uh, you know have some some, some good ones uh, but if you got some good uh, good honors and awards you know things that not everybody has already and you could certainly put that on there uh, we just interviewed a bunch of um, a bunch of folks for a creative writing uh, position here at St. Cloud State and <clears throat> almost all of them just had seemed like just endless endless honors awards prizes and it was just so many i didn't know uh 
personally, I didn't know which ones uh, were really prestigious uh, versus ones that were <laughs> just about anybody could have received, uh, but it did kind of strike me. They pretty much all had that uh, section. Uh, activities. You know, so maybe you've got some uh, extracurricular activities you think are relevant. That's kind of the key to this, really, is is it relevant? Um, if you like riding horses, but you're applying for this computer job, you know, does that, does that matter? Does that have anything to do with it? If it doesn't, you might take it off. Or again, you might leave it on there uh, just to kind of make yourself look a little interesting. Maybe, uh, uh, you never know, maybe the person... Uh, uh, Doing the interview might like horses too, so it might be a natural uh, bond there. Uh, references, uh, do not put that on there. <laughs> and don't put that silly thing about uh, references available upon request. Yeah, don't put that. You know, they know better. They know that you're going to have references. Uh, they can always ask you for those later. Usually they don't want to call your references right away. Uh, portfolio. Now, I guess if you do have a portfolio, this would depend on the type of job it is, obviously. If you're an artist, graphic designer, that sort of thing, uh, they'd probably want to see a portfolio. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why you would put that. Let's see. Here's the contact info. Uh, use your full name, even if you have a nickname. That seems like pretty good advice. Really, you probably want to err on the side of being formal with this resume. So even if everybody calls you Bubba... <laughs> It might, look, might make you look a little frivolous, a little silly, right, if you put that on, on your resume. Let's see, center one address, type two, uh, side by side. Uh, provide a professional email address. Uh, this is a key point. Um, what a lot of students do is they, they put their St. Cloud State email address on there. You'd think that would be fine, right? But the problem is... Uh, you don't, I don't, I don't, I, may, I think they might let you keep your email address for a year or something like that, but it might not even still be valid uh, by the time you're ready to graduate. So you might uh, want to and just get a Google email address. But in any case, you wouldn't want a silly one, you know, like, uh, again, like Bubba Joe. <laughs> Making fun of this name, but there's probably somebody named Bubba. Um, you know, what would be some sillier ones like Drunk Poodle? Uh, you know, you really want that on your resume, drunk poodle, or something silly, a bong water slurper. <laughs> you, know, you, you get the idea. Um, cutie pie, you know, something like that. Uh, provide uh, provide phone, uh, cell, or land where you can be reached during the day. Yeah, because you never know when they might call you either, so I don't know if we'll get into this, but just make sure you don't have a silly... Uh, voicemail message. You know, some people like to get kind of jokey uh, with their voicemail, and uh, you know, that can be a problem if it's your <laughs> your future employer calling and they get this uh, silliness. Uh, let's see. Omit age. Yeah, this 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 is all kind of um, uh, affirmative action type stuff, right? So uh, these companies can get in trouble if they're discriminating against people based on how old you are. Let's say. Uh, yeah, marital status, yeah, that's probably none of their business. Uh, race, sex, health, you know, all this stuff should not be uh, mentioned on there. Let's see, career objective. Uh, make it sound like the employer's job descriptions. This is actually a really, this is a good savvy point here. So one of the parts of this career research project is finding a job ad. And you really should, you know, don't just find it and ignore it. I mean, really look at the way they describe it, because it'll say things like uh, qualifications sought, or they'll describe, like, the job duties. Uh, so just look at the way they word things, and then just use some of that language uh, in your resume. Uh, make it brief. Uh, two lines of most. So we're talking here about the uh, career objective. Uh, so, again, I'd be okay if you didn't even have one. Uh, but if you do have one, definitely don't go on for more than two lines. My goodness. Uh, tell you what, tell what you want to do, uh, the level of responsibility that you want. So do you want to, I guess, are you seeking uh, some supervisory duties? Might mention that a lot of people don't want to be a supervisor. They don't, they don't want to do management. Uh, targeted to a job at a specific company. Yeah, here's the summary of qualifications. So I'm not even going to uh, go into this. I, 
I just really don't <laughs> want to see those sections. Uh, education. <clears throat> All right. Uh, first main category in these cases. Yeah, so you got that new degree. You certainly want to emphasize it. And again, if you don't want to emphasize it, uh, save some money <laughs> and drop out. Uh, need a degree for the job you're seeking. Uh, blah, blah. Yeah, put it in later if it's been a long time. Need page one for another category. Let degree that other applicants lack degree that other applicants may have. Uh, so don't worry about it. Just put it first. Uh, cover four year and graduate degrees, obviously. Okay, here's some interesting ones. Uh, so include a junior college. So what a lot of people do is uh, they won't start at St. Cloud State University right away. You know, they might do a couple years at a community college and then come uh, to St. Cloud. And they move around to a couple different colleges. Uh, so you really don't have to go into the detail uh, about all these community colleges. I mean, what the only thing they're really going to care about is where did you get your BA? Uh, so did the BA come from St. Cloud? Uh, you could just mention that, and you don't necessarily need to put all the different uh, other colleges that you went to, unless, you know, you did learn something special there. Uh, maybe you got some certificates there or something along those lines. Uh, study abroad. You know, not a lot of students take advantage of this. It just blows my mind. You know, St. Cloud State, we have all these wonderful programs in Germany and other countries where you can go and study for a while. Uh, you don't necessarily, you don't even need to have... Uh, uh, another language is one in England, uh, a castle you can go study in. I mean, how, how awesome is that? Uh, I mean, this really looks good. And if you can show you've been abroad, uh, you got some international experience, it looks really good. You should really emphasize that, uh, even if it is a non-credit course. Uh, give degrees, dates, schools, and cities. And it says you may list short descriptive course titles. Uh, so if again, it depends on the job. If you're doing the computer thing, uh, you can mention the courses that you took, the programming classes, uh, etc. Uh, include the GPA if it's good. <laughs> yes, I made a 1.0. Here it is. Uh, yeah. Um, if you got a, what do they say here, 3.4, mention it. Uh, 4.0, don't mention it. They even say it in the book. Uh, if you don't mention it, they're going to assume it is a 1.0. <laughs> it's terrible. So maybe you should just mention it no matter what. Uh, I, I wouldn't be, I don't know what your GPA is, obviously. It seems like most people do have, a, have pretty high GPAs these days. It's almost uh, weird if you don't have at least a 3.4. Uh, it wasn't like that when I was in school. Uh, but yeah, you could mention that 3.4 or 4.0. You don't want to appear that you're trying to hide it. And if your GPA is really low, you know, it might be kind of a clue. Maybe you need to study a little bit more. Uh, maybe retake some classes. Okay, honors and awards. New college graduates, honors and awards. So <laughs> I can't seem like everybody's got at least cum laude of these days. <laughs> I see you'd want to mention that, but uh, you know there are honor societies. There's uh, ways to distinguish yourself. There's a, uh, what is it, the president's list and the dean's list. Yeah, you can certainly mention all those. Uh, honors and activities, if listing fewer than three items, Let's see. Entries that add to your professional image. So even if you got nominated for a, an award, you know, that, that can be great. Uh, in English, we have uh, some literary magazines that we do. You can win prizes for those. Uh, you can win special, uh, what they call a merit-based scholarship. So some you write an essay, and if your essay is good enough, you can get the scholarship. You know, there's opportunities like that. It looks really good. It's a good achievement. Uh, awards from your professional societies, uh, major awards from civic groups. So if you've been active in the community, you know that's a wonderful thing. Uh, that can boost up your resume. Uh, academic honor society, uh, varsity letters. You know, lots of ideas here. And I'll say this: it's it's good. One of the reasons I want you to project a little bit in this uh, resume, be thinking about a few years from now, is it's not too late. You know, if you're a sophomore or a junior. And you don't, maybe you're not part of any uh, societies, you don't have any awards, you haven't applied for any of these scholarships, uh, you, you haven't been active at all um, in the civic groups. I mean, now it's kind of a wake up call, right? You think, do you want to, are you, <laughs> when you're on the job hunt, do you really want to just have no achievements? You know, it's not too late. Go out and see if you can win some of these 
and that will really pay off. All right, now we're moving into the uh, experience section of the resume. I'm going to include this information for each job held. So it seemed like the book was kind of going back and forth a little bit about, you know, what if you did get fired? Or what if the job really just doesn't have anything to do with the one you're applying to? And this is one of those areas where I've just, I've seen advice all over the place contradicting itself. Um, just my opinion on it, um, I'd probably err uh, on the side of uh, putting them on there, uh, unless you did just, if you got fired and you know, you know it's going to be bad if they call that person, you know, I don't know what might happen if you don't don't put it down. Uh, if they, they might check it out, maybe they would never notice. Um, you know, it just kind of depends. I guess you just have to make that call yourself sometimes. <laughs> Best advice, try not to get fired. <laughs> um, let's see, positions or job titles. Uh, yeah, organization, what was the name of the company, etc. Uh, where was it? Uh, when did you work there? How long? And then what were your duties, um, other details. And again, sometimes a job is, you know, if you're a server at a restaurant, everybody knows what that is. You don't need to explain all the duties. Uh, if it's something that's a little more confusing, like some kind of, uh, you know, maybe you were a, a Husky technician. Let's say you worked at the Husky help desk. Well, you know, I know what that is, but maybe somebody else might not know what that is. Uh, so you could explain like all the different parts of that job. Uh, activities, <laughs> critical for new college graduates. Uh, so you could have this activity section on there. And let's see, volunteer work, uh, student organizations. And again, if you haven't done any volunteer work and you're not part of any organizations, <laughs> let this be a wake up call. Uh, try to get involved before it's too late, right? Uh, professional associations, Activities involving talent or responsibility. So, yeah, intramural athletics. A lot of people like to do things like the rowing team. And I think it does, uh, yeah, even if it has nothing to do with the job, you know, at least it shows that you're, <laughs> I guess you're likable enough that they wanted you on the team, right? Um, but you're not you're sort of active person. You're out there doing things. Uh, you can work with the team. You know, and same thing with varsity. You know, it makes you look good, even if it doesn't directly pertain to the job. You know, leadership roles are always great. There's so many clubs on campus, and usually they're looking for people that'll be the president of the club, a vice president. Uh, you know, there's, there's offices that go along with it, and they can make you look good. And let's see, references. Usually omit from the resume, yes. Omit references available upon request, yes. Line up, line up three to five people. Hey, line up. <laughs> uh, so, you know, at some point they probably will ask you to give them some references, some people to call, talk to you, talk to them about you. And then get some pretty good advice. So let's take a look here. Uh, new graduates include one professor, uh, one employer, or an advisor minimum. Uh, so this is a good reason not to anger <laughs> your professors. <laughs> Because uh, even if you don't like the course, don't like the class, don't like the person, uh, you might end up at need, needing this person as a reference. So I'll always try to be respectful. Might pay off. Uh, choose persons who can comment on work habits. Yeah, leadership skills. So somebody that knows you well. Uh, don't list a relative even if you work for them. Yeah, not not going to be really convincing if you put your mom down there because, you know, mom is a little biased. <laughs> Uh, let's see, omit personal or character references. What? Omit? I've never seen anybody try to do that before. Yeah, I guess if you're feeling uh, like you need a character reference, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> what kind of trouble have you gotten yourself into? <laughs> uh, sometimes I get asked this, actually. I say, what about a parole officer? Hey, uh, uh, go ahead. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, do what you need to do. Uh, references continued. Uh, ask the person's permission. Oh, yeah, well, this is a no-brainer. You know, I don't want to get a call from somebody I don't even know, didn't expect, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, you'd want to come in and say, look, uh, Dr. Barton, uh, I really liked your class, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm applying for some jobs. I, I was wondering if you would mind if I uh, used you as a reference. 
That's fine. No, of course. <laughs> Jog their memory of your work. Yeah, this is this is a good point. Uh, sometimes I hear from students from like many years ago, and I don't really, you know, it sounds bad to say, but I don't really remember them. <laughs> or at least I don't remember like the essays they wrote or the projects they did. And it's really helpful to say, you know, I wrote that, I did that video on such and such. You know, just kind of jog my memory. Uh, keep the list up to date. Uh, list this information, name and title, organization, city and state, email and, and phone number. Uh, so you'd put on there, you know, Dr. Matt Barton, professor at St. Cloud State, St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, here's his email. Here's his uh, office phone. Uh, resume information, what to omit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> personal information. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this isn't about the references anymore. This is just about uh, the resume in general. Uh, yeah, we talked about some of the stuff you probably don't need to put in. Um, what was it, marital? You don't need to put in that you're married or, or single. Like, why would you put that? Uh, controversy, controversial activities or associations. So I, <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about here. Uh, controversial activity. Uh, well, hopefully you're not out uh, uh, <laughs> burning down buildings or something. Uh, and, and the Klan, uh, I don't know, that'd be controversial. I wouldn't want you in my, my class <laughs> if you <laughs> engaged in that kind of activity. Um, associations, uh, I, I guess what, seriously, I guess what they're talking about is uh, you know, like a political group on campus. Uh, we have some of those. You know, I don't want to get into it here. Uh, but you know, let's say it was like college Republicans, college Democrats. Uh, there's one that's like the freedom, uh, the free speech group or something. You know, and it's, it's kind of a little, sometimes it's a little questionable. You know, it sounds good, you know, free speech, but maybe there's some controversy there. Now, so anyway, the point is basically uh, if, you, if you list things like that, it might, um, and I don't want to say bias the person against you, but you kind of wonder, like, do you even need to mention it if it's just going to, if it's controversial, you know, maybe you're better. If you feel strongly about it, I say go ahead, put it on there. Uh, you know, if you're a proud member of that and it's important to you, uh, put it on there. Um, otherwise, though, you can probably just leave it off. And they don't specifically mention this on here, but I, I know sometimes people will put uh, like, like their church, their church, uh, the church they go to, and their religious activities, you know, missionary work, uh, that sort of thing. And the way I see it is I'd rather just put see you put it on there. Uh, it's, it's important to you. I mean, this is really about you, this resume. And even if, uh, you know, if the person said, well, I don't want to hire somebody for that, that's, that's too, uh, you know, that's part of this religion. Or, I mean, would you really even want to work there anyway? You know, sometimes you just have to look at it that way. Uh, if it's not important to you, then, of course, don't put it. Uh, high school facts. Uh, yeah, this is a, a good one. Like, you don't want to go on about stuff you did in high school. <laughs> it's kind of sad, really. Like, all your best achievements were back in high school? Come on. Uh, do not put trivial items on your resume. Wow, yeah, that's, that's what a tidbit. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Basic guidelines of email job hunting etiquette. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't use your current employer's email that, that, that would be pretty dumb um you don't want them getting back uh yeah. i don't even explain why that would not be a good idea <laughs> um uh, yeah set up a free internet-based email account it's easy google yahoo whatever uh, avoid silly or cryptic email addresses we've already talked about that one uh, a simple subject line uh, test how the resume looks before sending it. Now, this can be a big one. Uh, sometimes you save it as a PDF, and if you don't, you want to open that up and make sure it looks okay uh, before you send it. Sometimes it messes up your formatting uh, when you make that. When you go from the doc X to the PDF, sometimes it doesn't work right. Uh, so you want to check that out. Uh, send only one, one resume. Yes, yeah, so I don't keep sending them and sending them. Probably not the best uh, strategy. Let's see, when sending resumes in the text of an email, 
Now start all lines on the left margin. Yeah, this is because it probably wouldn't format correctly anyway. Uh, yeah, say a bold underline, this stuff probably won't work if it's just in a text email. Uh, headings in all caps, but use sparingly. And so basically, just keep it simple. All right, honesty. <laughs> because be honest. Whoa, <laughs> that hit me in the face. Ah! Always be honest on your resume. Always oh, three exclamation points. Whew. I'm not going to shout that loud. Uh, <laughs>